Welcome to this video about how to pass the stress test. This video is for you if you have chest pains and your doctor has ordered a stress test for you. If you've had a stress test before and then your cardiologist has ordered you to come back the following year, the following year, and the following year, and the following year to get retested, and you want to wipe that smug look off their face. And if you are a pilot and you need to pass the stress test to keep doing your job, then you will find this video very beneficial. Before we continue, if you want more videos like this, just click like and subscribe. Here's what we're going to talk about. First of all, if you've been ordered to do the, the stress test, we're going to talk about what is it? What is a stress test? Then the speed and incline of the stress test, followed by how do you train for the stress test. It's not quite as simple as just being in good cardiovascular shape. There's a bit more to it that, uh, that people, even in good shape, uh, can fail the stress test. Then we'll talk about proper progression. When does the test stop? as well as what happens if you fail the stress test. Before we get there, who am I to be talking to you about the stress test? Well, I'm not a doctor, but my name is Igor. I am the uh, author of a number of uh, books on Amazon. At the time of this recording, it's nine books. One of them is called High Blood Pressure Reversal Secrets, Type 2 Diabetes Reversal Secrets, Osteoporosis Reversal Secrets, all of whom were Amazon bestsellers. As well, I'm a personal trainer who specializes in helping people pass their stress test. These are some of my clients. Um, with various different fitness goals, and some of them have uh, have needed help with the stress test. So let's talk about what is the stress test. The stress test the, the stress test is a test of varying uh, speeds and inclines until you you hit a certain limit, and we'll talk about what that limit is in a few minutes. But it goes by a bunch of different names. It goes by names such as the treadmill stress test, the cardiac stress test, just the treadmill test, the stress ECG stress EKG. Uh, and these are just some of the ones that come to mind. Um, and so the stress test follows a certain protocol called the Bruce protocol. Again, it is a variation of speeds and inclines. So you'll see that at stage zero, uh, you're just walking at a very slow speed, 1.7. Um, and each stage lasts three minutes. Uh, then they elevate it to stage uh, 0 0.5, where you're walking at a speed of 1.7 miles per hour in, a, in an incline of 5 degrees. And basically, you can see on your screen the different uh, speeds and inclines, and they all last for about 3 minutes. If you if this video is too fast for you, I'm going to link this to an article below um, in the description, so you can actually see this in, um, in, in, in my blog. Now, let's talk about how do you train for the stress test. One common misconception is that if, if you're in good cardiovascular shape, you'll do well on the stress test. And that's not necessarily true. Why not? Well, because what is it that makes the stress test stressful? It's not so much the speed. As you can see in our previous uh, slide, the speed, even at the highest level, is not that fast, just six miles per hour. However, what makes the stress test stressful is the incline. Not very many people walk at an incline of, well, 20 degrees or even 12 degrees or 14 degrees. So this is why the stress test can often fail people who are in good cardiovascular shape. Now, if you need to pass a stress test, how do you train for it? Uh, here's, here are the steps, the step by step process. Step one, you test yourself. So you go back to the previous slide or to the blog in the description, and then you, you, you follow those stages. And as you're following these stages, you want to note these measurements. Before you even get on the treadmill, you want to know it's your pre-exercise heart rate. You also want to know it's your heart rate at one minute intervals. So no matter what stage you're, you're, you're at, no, uh, take your pulse at one minute intervals. Then you want to, to note the amount of time to complete the test. And in a second, I'll tell you when is the test complete. Um, then you take your heart rate one minute after the test is over. So you finish the test, you've reached the stopping point, which I'll talk about on the next slide. Um, and then you just stand on the treadmill and do nothing. After one minute of doing nothing, take your pulse again so that you know uh, exactly what is it. Uh, that's a big marker for passing the stress test. Now, when does the stress test stop? The stress test stops when you reach 85% of your maximal heart rate. That's a very important marker, 85% of your maximal heart rate. Now, if you're wondering, what is my maximal heart rate? Well, the formula for that is 220 minus your age. So let's use an example. Let's say you are 60 years old. So 220 minus 60 makes 160. That is your maximal heart rate. You want to stop at 85% of your maximal heart rate. So what's 85% of 160? 
it is 136 beats per minute. So that's when when your test would stop if you are 60 years old. You can adjust this based on your age. If you're 70, you're watching this, or if you're 50 and you're watching this and so on. Now, before you actually do this, I want to give you a warning. Don't do this test unless you've gotten your doctor's clearance to exercise. I want to emphasize that. The stress test is, well, stressful. If you have a heart condition and you have not been cleared for exercise, don't do this test. Now, if you don't have a heart condition and you've been cleared for exercise, or if you have a heart condition and you've been cleared for exercise, go ahead and do this. So that's the test. But do we train the way we test? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. So let's address proper progression. Proper progression means how do you work up to being able to pass the test? Um, and so the way I progress my clients is by starting off and working backwards. First, I ask them, how much time do they have until their test? If all they have is two months or less, then what I would do is just repeat the test two to four times per week. You, you might notice that every five to 10 workouts, you might be able to go up one level within the Bruce protocol. Okay, so that's if you have two months or less. Now, if you have more than two months, you have the potential to do a lot better on your stress test. Now, what you would do is you warm up for five minutes. After that, you, this is called, you, you're, you're going to do interval training. And your first interval is going to, 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 be, to be this. The last level that you completed in the Bruce protocol is, the, is your first interval. So let's say you completed stage three in the Bruce protocol. That will be the interval. Um, uh, that will be your first interval. Now, how do you stay at that um, at that speed and incline for? You just stay there until your heart rate rises to 85% of your max. Once it rises to 85% of your max, start uh, go, go down to a decline, of, sorry, to an incline of zero degrees. So no incline. Maintain the same speed though. And how do you stay at that recovery interval for? You stay there until your heart rate returns to 65% of your max or lower. And then you repeat this for six to 12 intervals. Now you'll notice that in this method of training, I don't prescribe uh, intervals and in uh, both work and recovery intervals based on duration. I prescribe it based on your pulse because the fitter you are, the longer it's going to take you to get up to 85% and the less time it's going to take you to get down to 65%. Furthermore, the more intervals you do, the faster you're going to get up to 85% and the slower you're going to get down to 65%. So that's why I don't like to base my recommendations on time. I like to base it on biometrics, what your own body is telling you. The more tired you get, the more these intervals will change. And again, you want to do between six and 12 intervals uh, three or four times per week. And then how do you progress this? When do you move on to the next stage? So you move on to the next stage in the Bruce Protocol when you can do at least one interval of three minutes at your previous highest level. So let's say again that your highest level was level three. Once you can do in your training level three for three minutes, the next workout, you would move on to level four. And then it might take you anywhere between five and 10 workouts to progress onto the next level after that. So when does the test stop? Again, it stops when you hit 85% of your maximum heart rate. I want to emphasize that. Now, let's say you've gone through the stress test and you fail a stress test. What happens if you fail? Well, option one, we, then your doctor might want to know why did you fail, in which case they will ask for more tests, whether that's blood tests or additional like diagnostics or imaging tests, etc. Option two, your doctor has all the information that they need and they will make additional recommendations, whether that's surgery or medications or lifestyle changes or something else. Option three, if you did the stress test for the sake of you know, keeping your job, you might lose your job. This is especially true for airline pilots. Uh, so these are the three things that can happen if you fail a stress test. Now, what can you expect as a result of following the protocol here? If you follow the protocol here, you can expect you to, to have pretty fast progress. One of my clients, he he was at about the 48th percentile. And after about three months, he scored the 95th percentile without any weight loss. His cardiologist was very impressed. And again, the reason that he did so well is because he trained specifically for the test. He, 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 he trained with an incline. He didn't just train to walk faster or run faster, et cetera. He trained with an incline. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. And if you want some personal help with your stress test, send me an email at this email address, which is also in the description below. It's Igor, that's my name, I-G-O-R, at torontofitnessonline.com.